Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. My name is Seva, and in this short video from the Excel 101 series, we'll investigate the key mathematical and statistical concept of covariance and learn how to calculate it in Excel using four different methods. We have got here two variables, X and Y, over the course of 10 observations, and we might want to determine what is the joint variability of these two variables. Do they move up and down together? Do they have an inverse relationship observed here in the data? Or are they pretty much unrelated to each other? And covariance is the first step that you might want to take to investigate this. Covariance can be defined, and this is the formal definition of it, as the expected value of the product of deviations of two variables from their respective means. This particular formula does represent this concept. So we might want to calculate it using the definition exactly. And if we are doing it using samples, we can specify it using uh, means rather than expected values. So for a population, we just need to sum the deviations of variables from their means uh, multiplied together and divided by n, where n is the sample size. However, if we're dealing with a sample, that means these 10 observations represent a broader population of observations, we need to uh, implement a sample correction, which is dividing by n minus 1 instead of n. And this is a key concept when calculating not only covariance, but also variance and standard deviation. It has to do with uh, sampling with replacement. If by some chance we introduce the same observation into our sample when we sample with replacement from a population, this particular uh, occurrence would not affect our mean calculations, and that's why we always divide by n when calculating means or averages. However, that would bias our estimation of the variability of the data, be it covariance, variance, or standard deviation, downward due to the fact that this observation would not be different from itself. And this is what conceptually leads to the sample correction, uh, dividing by n minus 1 instead of n when dealing with samples. And we will implement this here as well, calculating covariance using four methods, both for population and sample. So for the direct method using uh, the definition, we might need to calculate the means or the sample averages of x and y. Here we can just use the average function and then calculate the uh, respective differences. So here we subtract the mean of x from the uh, x observation. And uh, here we need to log the row as the mean does change from variable to variable, but does not change from observation to observation. And that allows us to calculate those deviations quite uh, simply and efficiently. And for the population covariance, we can use the sum product function, uh, applying it to those two arrays and then dividing by the sample size n, which is 10, as well as for the sample, we can reproduce the same formula, however, divided by 10 minus 1 instead, which gives us minus 2.76 and minus 3.07. Here we see that those two variables are inversely related as per the covariance calculation, and the sample covariance is higher than the population covariance in terms of magnitude, as it um, alleviates the potential downward bias that is associated with sampling with replacement. However, there can be a shorter, more efficient method that does not involve calculating those two columns, which uh, has to do with just implementing the definition in one cell using a more uh, nuanced function. So here we can simply sum the deviations of x from its mean multiplied by the deviations of y from its mean. And as we sum uh, these uh, products of deviations, we need to divide it by the sample size for the population and by 10 minus 1, which is n minus 1 in our case, for the sample, giving us exactly the same result. However, we can also use a, a maths-provided shortcut. You can prove that this um, more uh, complicated functional representation of the covariance can be shortened to simply the difference between the uh, average product and the product of averages. So covariance can be also represented as the difference between the expected value of x times y minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. And here 
we just need to calculate the respective means as well. So here in this column, we can calculate x times y. Drag this formula around to calculate the sample average of x times y and apply this particular formula in Excel. So uh, the expected value of x times y or the mean of x times y minus the product of the individual variable means, giving us exactly the same result for the population. For the sample, we just need to implement the sample correction directly by adjusting this particular expression by the factor of 10 divided by 10 minus 1. And this is a very common uh, sample correction that you see in all areas of statistics and further econometrics, giving us exactly the same result again. And as you might have guessed already, Excel has a built-in covariance function for both population and sample, and it's quite intuitive and easy to use. So you have got the covariance.p function for populations, and we just need to input the two raw data arrays, giving us the correct result here. And for the sample covariance, we use covariance.s to outsource all of the calculations and uh, all of the hard work to Excel itself. And that's all there is in terms of how to calculate covariance and explain the results in Excel using four different methods. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful and stay tuned for even more content from the Excel 101 series.